Hi there, um, I've recently started using the uh, 23 centimeters amateur radio band and I didn't really want to go out and buy an antenna because they're fairly expensive or can be probably 150 for a Yagi <clears throat> so um, I decided to build this thing and the other reason was I wasn't sure how um, good I would what I would achieve from this location although I'm halfway up a hill about nearly 400 feet up there's lots higher hills around me so um, 70 centimeters is bad enough here so 23 centimeters is likely to be a lot worse and it has proved to be a lot worse but anyway I decided to build this uh, little aerial called the bike quad and <clears throat> I've built these before years ago I made one about 25 years ago and for TV signals for TV it's a TV antenna. But anyway, this one, is, as I said, it's a, basically two quads, one above the other. That's one quad and one there, and they're joined in the middle. And um, you've got a reflector behind, which is a sheet of solid uh, copper, and um, it's about six inches by eight inches. Just lucky enough to have that in my scrap metal drawer, and um, it's fed with uh, semi-rigid coax and you adjust the matching by moving the quad elements backwards and forwards till you get the best match and then when you've done that you solder it and make sure it doesn't move around and I got the, uh, the semi-rigid coax when I was uh, modifying my uh, Marconi RF generator it had the RF output on the back which is no good at all so I removed the uh, semi rigid coax and uh, refitted the socket to the front and then I had this bit spare when I'd done that so um, and this little antenna in theory should have a gain of about 7 to 8 dB <coughs> sorry cut off anyway it does seem to work fairly well I've had it in use for about a month or so and I can hear a beacon about 50 miles away and considering where I live um, halfway up a hill with hills all around this beacon is towards the south and I've got a, another hill a couple of hundred feet above me higher than me so I'm having to get over that um, so yeah and then I made my first uh, actual contacts a couple of weeks ago and they have these things called activity nights or contests whatever you want to call them and there was a station up on the Mendips about 50 miles away and he was about S9 so that was fairly good considering I have to get over the hill and there's also a guy in Chippenham and he's that's about 20 miles away he wasn't quite so strong but anyway, um, so it's inspired me to do a bit more on the on that band. So, as I was saying, you have to adjust the uh, distance between the quad and reflector to get the best match. And I use a return loss bridge to do that. But the um, results I was getting were fairly poor. I think the best I could get was about 8 dB return loss. I don't know what that equates to in SWR, probably about 1.7 to 1, something like that. Not great, but um, that's the best I could do anyway, so uh, I'm going to just show you the uh, setup for doing that and the return loss measurement. So i just do that now. So, right, so what I've done is I've connected up my special analyzer which has a tracking generator output and I've got a return loss bridge connected and a bit, bit of cable connected to that so I've normalized out the cable so what I'm going to do is connect it up to the uh, the by quad and we'll see what we get on the uh, on the screen so just put the uh, camera down for a second
Okay, so I just um, pressed mark marker, and we're looking at uh, 1296 megahertz on the marker, and we're getting a return loss of 7 dB, which is not great. It's really not good. Um, obviously, the aerial will be affected by proximity to things in this workshop. Um, I mean, if I move it around. Can see the response will change quite a bit but anyway what I want to do now is show you the other air antenna I've just made right so this is the design plans or some of them for um, 21 element Yagi antenna for 23 centimeters and it's got a reflector which consists of four uh, elements one above the other basically and a folded dipole and 19 directors now and this bit here shows you how you make the uh, the folded dipole which is made out of uh, copper wire and then you've got a because it's a balanced folded dipole you need to um, feed it to an unbalanced output so you use a ballon which is made up of semi-rigid coax which I just so happen to have some of in fact I... Uh, what did I do with it? yeah here's a bit which um, I bought when I was rerouting the RF connector on my uh, Marconi signal generator because it came with the connector on the back so I bought this a long piece longer than this obviously to reroute it to the front and this is quite flexible for semi-rigid coax and that's what I use for the uh, to make this ballon here hoping that this would have the right impedance it was specified at 50 ohms also the right velocity factor which is critical when you're making a, a ballon like that um, and they specify 39 millimeters exactly which is also very critical and um, back to the rest of the design it basically consists of aluminium rods or aluminium for the uh, directors and reflector aluminium rods which are 4mm diameter and the boom is 15mm square tube and the whole thing is about 5.5 five foot long so it's not tremendously big this uh, design was one that was originated back in the early 80s by some German guy, DK something or other. And he uh, designed it, antenna, an antenna up to 6 metres long with 60 elder elements on it. Uh, that's, you know, that's over 20 foot long. It's enormous. Anyway, I don't want anything that big. So, and that was specified at 20 dB gain, I think, for that length. This one's specified to have a gain if it works properly of about 15 16 db which would be adequate i don't want to put up a massive area anyway so what i did was um i had a look around for what i was going to make it out of and i'll just show you the actual antenna antenna is here and it goes all the way over there and that's what it looks like and as I said, you've got these four millimeter rods, which, um, and a 15 millimeter boom. So what happened was I looked on the internet from on various sites to get the materials for this. And I found one site, yeah, they would supply me with the four millimeter aluminium rod and also the um, boom which is square um, tubing but there was a problem when I came to order it my order value wasn't high enough also they wanted to charge me 15 pounds in postage I thought no I ain't gonna do that so what I did was I um, I went into the local well it wasn't the local one it, it was a place called B&Q which we've got in the UK it's like a DIY warehouse and they've got shops all around the country 
the local one here didn't have what I wanted so I had to go over to Cheltenham and they had had these four millimeter rods um, in one meter length so I needed four of those to, to do the whole air antenna and they didn't have square tubing but they had this basically u-shaped um, square tube so that was okay it seems fairly strong it doesn't bend anyway I went up to the checkout with this uh, two meter length of square tube or u-shaped tube and I noticed before I uh, picked it up that it was listed at I think £12.50 for two metres I thought fine that's okay no problem and then when I picked it up it didn't have a barcode sticker on it so I took it to the checkout showed it to the guy at the checkout he said oh dear I'll have to look it up on my phone so he spent about three minutes four minutes looking it up on his phone and eventually he found something he thought it was he said ah oh, I think I've got it £5.60 does that sound right oh yes I said so I got it for less than half price in the end which is pretty good so the whole aerial antenna has cost me probably about 20 pounds and if we look at the uh, driven element or folded dipole two it's made of two millimeter copper wire if you like and that came out of a bit of old coax and if I show you the bottom of it and do it from the vice there you can see what it looks like and this bit here is the uh, ballon which converts it from balanced to unbalanced and it's all soldered onto an end type um, socket and it was really hard making this it really was hard because you have to be so careful with your um, marking and dimensions because if you're if you're half a millimeter or a millimeter out, no, I, I don't think I was that far out. But the worst I think I was out by is about 0.2 millimeters when I was marking the holes, and even that amount is going to cause a deviation at the end by a few millimeters, which happened on a few of these elements. I had to just bend them in the end to get them fairly straight and also the other problem is um, in the design it says drill the holes 3.9 millimeter fine I've got drills that go in 0.1 millimeter steps one millimeter up to 5.9 so that was no problem then you're supposed to hammer the four millimeter um, rods through the boom and it's supposed to be a really tight fit then well, yes, yeah, some of them were a tight fit, and some of them turned out to be quite loose. So I, in the end, I just glue, put glue on them, put Evo stick around there, and it seems to stabilise the whole thing. None of them are loose now. The other problem was, you're hammering a fairly soft material, like alum, aluminum, aluminium, whatever you want to call it, through this um, central uh, boom, and they were bending some of them not only that the ends were compressing with the hammering so I had to scrap a couple of them and make new ones because of the fact they were just bending so all in all it wasn't an easy project and long and tedious it was making it but I've made the thing now and it does seem to work I mean it's difficult to compare it with the other antenna but I think it produces stronger signals. In theory, it should be of about, I don't know, 7 dB more gain than the previous one I showed you. So I'd, I'll just stick it on the on the um, return loss bridge and you can see what the match is like. The match is not good. I don't know what the reason for that is. I followed everything precisely as I could be. Uh, my only worry is that this this uh, semi-rigid coax has not got the same velocity factor as the one they specified but anyway I'll connect it up to the red turn loss bridge and we can look at it on the on the screen right so I've got it connected up now and the uh, the match is 
pretty poor. The return loss is measuring at 4.5 dB. And anyway, it's not the best environment to be testing it in a, a workshop with metal all around it. I did have it. I did wave it outside at one point when I was doing this test, and I was getting a better return loss than that. I think it was somewhere near eight. That's still not good though. And there doesn't seem to be any real resonances, resonant points. So it does make me worry about it, whether it's actually doing what it should do, this antenna. But um, I think what I want to do next is compare the two as best I can by um, putting a signal generator at the top of the garden. And I've got my Marconi up here, which goes up to 2.5 gigahertz and I can connect a small dipole to that and put it up the top of the garden which is about roughly 100 feet away from where I have the antennas and I'll just do some measurements between the two antennas and I would expect that the path loss over that distance would be about 60 dB that's my guess anyway so I'm going to now go outside and set all this equipment up um, so there you are, go out there and do that. Right, here's my uh, test set up. And uh, using my trusty Black & Decker Workmate, which I've had for about 30 odd years. Quite useful for uh, supporting aerial poles when doing antenna testing. And there's a little by quad up on the top and if I look up the garden you can just about see the signal generator which is outputting 0 dBm um, on 1296 megahertz with a little halfway dipole on the output socket so if we go over to the spectrum analyzer All right, there's the peak. And what am I reading? Minus, minus 58, minus 56, does vary a bit. Call it minus 57, minus 57 dBm. So I wasn't far off when I said 60 dB path loss. So yeah, I've got to remember that number. Minus 57 because I'm going to get the uh, Yagi out and uh, stick that on there and see what that does. Right, here we are. I've got the uh, Yagi up and I have aligned it for maximum signal. And it's much more critical because it's got such a narrow beam width compared to the quad, but um, and also the elevation. I've got to get the elevation exactly right as well. Anyway, let's go and look at the spectrum analyzer. Right. There's the pig, and what am I reading? Minus 53, roughly. Okay, call that minus 53. It's pretty steady, actually, compared to the uh, other antenna. And so that's an increase of roughly 4 dB. Maybe 5 if you're lucky, but... I don't know, it's, it's not a massive amount of difference, but um, that's just the way it goes, I guess. Still not happy with the, uh, the uh, matching section. Um, I guess the only thing to do is to, uh, to try it out and see if it is much better. Uh, problem is I don't have a rotator. I'll have to find a way around that one. And I'm glad I got all this done today because we're supposed to be having fairly heavy rain for the next couple of days. So now I've got to dismantle all this junk and then I'll have some to eat. So that's, that's um, all there is for today. Bye for now.